Okay, we're going to continue with our study of constitutive relations. Uh, and so far, what we've seen is, um, you know, fairly elementary notions of uh, constitutive relations for fluids and solids. And um, in this context, we, we saw the notion of, uh, you know, ideal fluids, non-ideal fluids. We saw the idea of uh, compressible uh, and incompressible fluids. We saw also, in the context of compressible fluids, we saw the notion of elastic fluids. And then we went ahead and looked at uh, solids, right? And these, and, and in the context of solids, we looked only at elastic solids, but we saw that there is an important distinction, especially when one is dealing with nonlinear elasticity at finite strains. There is an important difference between a uh, between notions of elasticity, okay? And we saw that the probably the the purest notion of elasticity in some sense is this idea of hyperelasticity, where we have a strain energy function. What we're going to do now is look at a uh, exceedingly important idea, right? It's probably the single most important idea in all of nonlinear elasticity. It's also a very simple one, physically. Its mathematical translation, however, can sometimes seem um, a bit abstract, okay? Uh, this is this mysterious notion which I'm dancing around is uh, the idea of um, the notion of objectivity. Right, or also often called frame invariance. Frame invariance, further also called uh, invariance with respect to observer. Okay? So, um, to put it in a very simple, almost cartoonish way. Here's, 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 here's what's happening. Let's talk about it in the context of a solid, right? We have the body reference configuration deformed, it's gone to its current configuration, okay? We have our basis, right? It's our reference frame. What we're trying to say is that what we compute for the constitutive, constitutive response of the solid is something that needs to stay invariant whether we look at it, whether we look at, um, you know, all our tensors and thereby construct our constitutive functions using this basis or a different basis, okay? All right, something as simple as that, right? So we, we, wanted, we want to understand what is our notion of invariance with respect to change in basis. And by change in basis, this is equivalent to change in observer, right? Simply because you may like this basis, I may like a different basis with a different origin and different orientation of basis vectors, okay? We need to understand what it means to have constitutive relations that are properly invariant with respect to such changes, all right? Because otherwise, you and I could compute very different constitutive responses, right? This holds for uh, solids. It holds as well for fluids, right? So we have a fluid. Right? It's, it's flowing past us. We're looking at that, at that window, as always. So are we going to refer our uh, tensors, our vectors and tensors and scalars as well, to this basis or to a different basis? Okay? And we need to make sure that whatever functions we take are invariant with respect to this. Because even if you think that, well, it really doesn't matter, I'm always going to stick with this basis, uh, what you will gather by and by is that the physics of... Um, continuum bodies is not so forgiving, okay? We know that, it gen that, that, that the physics of continuum bodies tends to generate um, objects, vectors and tensors, which themselves have elements of rotation, okay? And we saw this uh, in the case of the deformation gradient. Remember, it's decomposition into a rotation and stretch tensor. 
right? So that will come back to haunt us if we don't ensure that things are properly invariant with respect to change in basis. Okay? All right. So with that motivation, let's get on with the job. So we're, we're going to do some background, um, background mathematics. Um, and uh, here's the idea. So let's look then at um, change in basis. Okay, now this is an idea that we did look at when we were uh, very early in the series of lectures looking at uh, understanding how we write tensors and vectors uh, in given a basis. Okay, so we did discuss change of basis there. Okay, so we're going to revisit that and, and, and develop it a little more, okay, in a little more detail really. Okay, so let's suppose that, we, that this is the situation we have. We have one basis here, and I'm going to denote this basis as E1, E2, E3, okay? And let's suppose that uh, we have some point, okay, x, right? And it's a position vector which we've written relative to this basis, okay? Um, let's suppose that uh, somebody comes along and says that they don't like the basis we've just put there. They want to have a different basis, so let's suppose they do... Um, that. Okay, and let's, let's suppose that that is their E1 bar, E2 bar, and E3 bar. Okay, I've, I've ensured that both of these are uh, right-handed and that they are, they are orthonormal. Okay, let's assume that, that we have that. Okay, so let's just suppose that we have uh, E i dotted with E j equals delta i j and E i bar dotted with E j bar also equals delta i j. Okay? Uh, let's suppose that the origins are, uh, let's label the origins O and O bar. I don't want O bar there. Let me put it on the other side. Uh, o bar. Okay. Now that position vector of this point has uh, changed. Okay. And let's label this translation vector. Okay. This translation vector is. Um, Right, that translation vector is uh, C bar. Okay? All right? Now, what we want to understand is, um, is the following, right? We want to understand how to write this vector. Okay? In the new basis. All right? Now, observe that that vector, the vector that we're talking about here, is essentially the vector x minus c bar, always, right? Right, just, just from vector addition, okay? And here, the one thing that should be constantly ringing in your ears is that when we talk about vectors, they are invariant, right? A vector is invariant. Those three vectors that I've drawn are invariant with respect to basis. The vectors remain the same. The only thing that's allowed to change is our representation of those vectors. And to represent vectors, we need to have a basis. Okay? With that understanding, let's, let's just go ahead. Okay? So, let us observe that, uh, you know, we, we, we know that uh, x minus c bar, right, would be written as xi minus c bar i e i. Okay? So x minus c bar is equal to x i minus c bar i 
in the original basis, right? The first basis, the one on the left here. Okay. Uh, what we want to do is just uh, rewrite this in terms of the other basis. Okay. And in order to do that, let us suppose that the basis vectors in the new basis are given by e bar i equals q transpose e i uh, for q belonging to SO3, SO3 plus, right? So positive determinant, okay? Thereby it maintains the handedness, all right? Okay. Um, fine. So if we have this, of course, we know from here that uh, this implies that EI is equal to Q E bar I, right? Because Q is, uh, Q belongs to SO3 and so it's orthogonal, right? And uh, what we want to do now is uh, rewrite here, okay? Let's make a substitution for each EI. Okay, all right, um, and in particular, before we do that, let's go ahead and observe that because we have on the right-hand side uh, Q E bar I, we, that, that is also a vector, right? The right-hand side that we have here is also a vector which we can expand in the same basis E bar, okay? And when we do that, what we are going to write here is uh, very carefully, write this out as Q K I E bar K. Okay? What we've done is observe that what I've circled there is a vector, which I'm going to write in the barred basis. Okay? Uh, and we've simply written that as, uh, you know, expanded out in the barred basis. Okay? And when we first defined uh, tensor components, we, we had agreed to have this particular notation and arrangement of indices when we did such a thing, okay? What I'm going to do now is make a substitution uh, in this relation, okay? All right, so the way I'm going to do that is uh, the following, okay? What that does is it tells us that our vector x minus c bar which we wrote as x i minus c bar i, okay? Now note that I haven't completed what I wanted to write, but what I have on the right-hand side are the components with respect to the original basis, okay? This times uh, e i, but for each e i, we have this representation, q k i e bar All right? Okay? But now you observe that we can equivalently write this as Q K I uh, X I minus C bar I using the commutativity of uh, multiplication, right? All of this times E bar K. Okay? But then our uh, Vectors on the left-hand side, that vector on the left-hand side can, if, if we were to just expand it out in, in, in the basis, in the E-bar basis, what we would write, what we would write is X I, uh, let me call this X I bar minus C double bar I, um, yeah, E-bar. Okay, I, I should, okay, I, I, I made a cardinal mistake of, of using the same index that I had before, so let me just correct that by introducing a new index here, right? I can't have the same index, I need to have xj. Okay? All right? But by comparison now, we know that we can, uh, um, let's, let's, okay. x i minus c bar i, okay? So that is what we have as the relation between the components 
of our vector in the new basis, in the barred basis, relative to its components in the unbarred basis, okay? So, if we think of the components, okay, those components change as x bar 1 minus c double bar 1, x bar 2 minus c double bar 2, x bar 3 minus c double bar 3, okay, equals q, right, the tensor q, acting on x1 minus c bar 1, x2 minus c bar 2, x3 minus c bar 3, okay, all right. So, in terms of components, what we see, if, if, if we just write the components using linear algebra notation, what we may say is that um, x bar minus c double bar, right, and we understand this as, as essentially the vector that I've written just above in the brace brackets, okay? Those components combined into a vector transform as this. Okay? When the basis transforms as E bar I equals Q transpose EI. All right? Okay? All right. And then you observe that what we have here, we can always rewrite as, um, we can always write x bar minus c double bar, remembering that these are the, this is the vector of components, is equal to q x minus um, or plus yet, yet another vector, vector c, where this vector c is essentially minus q c bar, okay?